Hello, my name is Ki Chan. I'm a political assistant professor in the Division of Health Policy and Administration at the School of Public Health at the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health. I teach online courses. In this video, I will share with you a very helpful tool to help me add back the humanistic aspect of learning and teaching on an online educational platform. In other words, adding back the fun to online learning. I teach graduate level courses in public health, financial management, leadership, and decision analysis, all on an online distant learning platform. Most of our students are full-time working professionals who are completing this graduate level degree as part-time. We offer both the synchronous and asynchronous platform. On the synchronous platform, students are required to join the online class at a specific time and date, and they're required to attend the lecture and participate in real time. This type of learning allows the students to engage where they can see each other. On an asynchronous platform, the course materials are posted ahead of time on a learning system such as Blackboard Collaborate. Students can have access to this learning material, the lectures, the videos, the assignments, and discussion board anytime, anywhere. While the asynchronous platform does allow flexibility for the students to engage in the material based on their own time frame and schedule, there is no mandatory participation in real time. Therefore, the learning environment may be lacking a humanistic aspect of the educational experience. Students can interact with each other on the discussion board, but students can't really respond to each other or see each other or hear each other as they would in a synchronous platform. Based on the feedback that I got from my students, one feedback is that the online students, online learning can be very isolating and very static. Then I had a question to myself, does online learning have to be isolating? I want to change this perspective. I was very fortunate to be a teaching scholar this year, which allowed me to be a better teacher and scholar and learn new opportunities to create an artifact on how to create a humanistic aspect to online learning. In this past semester, I used this tool called VoiceThread that is very similar to the discussion board where you can comment, make responses, but using the voice thread, you can add the audio and video as a comment. So therefore, the students have an opportunity to see each other. There is something different about hearing the words and watching the face expression of your students while they make a comment or make a response on a discussion board, a PowerPoint slide, or even an article in addition to the traditional responses on discussion board. So this semester, as part of my class, my students are required to work on a case study. And as part of this case study, they need to submit a report and a presentation. They work in teams. And oftentimes, the team reports are submitted to me, and I read the reports, and I look at the presentation. But the other teams don't really have an opportunity to give comments or really give feedback in a real-time um, aspect. But using VoiceThread, students were able to make these comments. So using VoiceThread, my students were able to make these 10-minute presentation where different members were able to contribute to an audio or video file to the presentation. And that VoiceThread software allows the narrative recording to be made at different times, different places, and it weaves it together into a seamless presentation with the audio and video files from different speakers that were made from different times as it's the whole package. While I was super excited to implement this new online tool, I quickly learned that adopting new tools may be very with ease with myself. Many students had a lot of mixed responses. Some students really loved the new tool and learned quite quickly. Some students didn't really understand why we were using the VoiceThread as a presentation tool. They were quick, they were happy using the PowerPoint slide with an audio file in a very traditional way. Um, some students were just very stressed out while using this new technology while learning the course mature at the same time. Some were just afraid they didn't have enough time to learn everything and learn it well. So in just a bit, I will share with you three things. How do you make VoiceThread as a part of your teaching tool? How to use VoiceThread as a learning tool for your students to become more engaged with each other in the material 
And third, how to address some of the challenges in using a new tool such as VoiceThread. To help you see the end product of VoiceThread, I will share with you one of my students' team presentation using VoiceThread, where different members of the teams were able to contribute to the files and they uploaded the presentation. And after the presentation was uploaded, members from different teams were able to provide feedback, ask questions, provide additional resources to the team's presentation using audio, video, or text. At the end of this video, I hope you will see that the learning tool VoiceThread is a great way to engage students anywhere, anytime, especially online. At the end of my semester, at the end of my semester, the students love the tool. And a few of my students are actually going to tell their employers to use VoiceThread as a presentation tool in their workplace. This is the fun part of being a teacher, seeing your students learn the material, work on the material, and teach the material to others. So enjoy this VoiceThread. I'm going to go over how to set up a VoiceThread tool in your Blackboard site. This is one of my Blackboard site, Homeroom MPH Masters Public Help Online. When you scroll to the left side on the plus button, pin it underneath content area. When I click onto content area, I'm going to name this voice thread presentation. When I click onto here, this is hidden so far as you can see here. We're going to set this up first. Underneath tool, you can scroll down and you'll find voice thread. I'm going to call this voice thread. And in this voice thread, I'm going to go over what I've learned as a teaching scholar. So this will be a presentation on what I learned as a teaching scholar. Using VoiceThread. I'm going to hit the views, track my views here. Now that this is embedded, I'm going to hit VoiceThread. Since this will be the first time VoiceThread tool is installed in my Blackboard site here, I have the option of setting it up as a course view, individual VoiceThread, or home page. Um, for the purpose of inputting it into your course, I'm going to have a course view set up. So there's no VoiceThread found, you can either create one. So I'm going to upload the VoiceThread PowerPoint slide that I'm going to use to make my VoiceThread. I can also select VoiceThread for my previous classes or VoiceThreads that I made um, online. So here are some of the VoiceThreads that are owned by me that I made from other courses. So this is a great um, bank if you have a VoiceThread made for other courses and you want to reuse or use an example in your current courses. So I'm going to create one, create a new voice thread. And you see here there's an option here that says add media. You can either add the media or you can drag it straight onto this button. Uh, you can upload a file by hitting my computer. You can upload media sources. Let's say you have um, files that are stored up in the cloud, you can do that. Or you can have audio files that you want to upload and make comments using VoiceThread, any photos or videos, MP4 players, um, files, or a website link. In this example, I've already made a PowerPoint slide that highlights my lessons learned and unlearned as a teaching scholar. So I'm going to share that with you today. So I hit VoiceThread sample file, which I've already made, and it's going to upload. Once it uploads, as you can see, it's processing here. I'm going to type in a title here. And it's going to be what I learned as a teaching scholar. And this would be um, lessons learned on how to use VoiceThread as a teaching tool, how to use VoiceThread as a learning tool. and how to address challenges while using VoiceThread as a tool. So these will be the three key topics I'm going to go over using VoiceThread. And you can also tag this. So let's say if you have 
a group of files that you want to tag so it's easier for you to look at. So I'm going to maybe call these as educational tools. So now that my VoiceThread is now labeled, you can see here this is the description, this is my title. I can now make my audio file as a part of my presentation here. So now I'm going to share and return to the course. And I can either submit this um, and share it with my homeroom or other um, rooms. I can either view and comment, view and comment, edit. So I'm going to hit view, comment, edit. So this allows myself to edit and, uh, and also others to make comments as well. So that's it. I'm going to submit and share onto this Blackboard site, which is the homeroom and PH online. So now that I have uploaded my PowerPoint slide into the VoiceThread tool, I'm going to now record my audio. So here it says you have to make sure Flash Player is installed. So I'm going to hit install every time I'm going to use this. So I just upload it again. And if you notice here, um, you can always trash this. So you can always upload multiple different files. You can copy it. You can remove this, so not necessarily trash it, but just remove it from your Blackboard site. Because if you trash this, this might actually trash it from your entire bank, um, from, where, from where it originated. You can share this, and you can edit this. So I'm going to now edit this. Ooh, I'm going to add comments. Head on to here. So now that I uploaded this, I'm going to do an audio file attaching it to my Blackboard site. So now you can see this is my PowerPoint slide. I always like to scroll to make sure all my slides are embedded correctly in the right order. So this looks great, perfect. Because you don't want to be making your audio file and realize that you didn't have the right of slides or they're in the wrong order. Allowed. Hello, in this voice thread presentation, I will go over what I learned as a teaching scholar. My name is Ki Chan. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Division of Health Policy and Administration at the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health. I was very grateful for the opportunity to be a teaching scholar this year, where I was able to learn a lot of new tools and help me become a better teacher and scholar. I can ask. Hello. In this voice thread presentation, I will go over what I learned as a teaching scholar. My name is Ki Chan. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Division of Health Policy and Administration at the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health. I was very grateful for the opportunity to be a teaching scholar this year, where I was able to learn a lot of new tools and help me become a better teacher and scholar. Did I like that audio? I think I'm almost okay with that. So I'm going to hit save now. And if I didn't like it, I can always cancel it and re-record this. So I'm going to hit save. So now that my audio file is being saved onto this presentation slide, if I ever want to um, hear it again, I can just click on to here. Hello. In this voice thread presentation, I will go over what I learned as a teaching scholar. Okay, so you can see that it plays it again. I can also trash it um, and delete this comment. Now, let's say I really like this comment and I want to maybe add a second comment to this audio file. I can do so. So let's say I want to make another audio file. In this presentation, I will go over three key concepts that I learned as a teaching scholar. First is using VoiceThread as a teaching tool, VoiceThread as a learning tool, and how to address challenges when using VoiceThread as an online tool. In this presentation, I will go over three key concepts that I learned as a teaching scholar. First is using VoiceThread as a teaching tool, VoiceThread as a learning tool, and how to address challenges when using VoiceThread as an online tool. So did I like that audio? I liked it, so I'm going to save it. So here, I just made two separate audio file 
onto the slide. And when I hit play back, you will see that the two audio files are weaved together um, sequentially, and so that it sounds as if it's a continuous audio file. Or I have even wrote something here. So let's say if I want to type something here. Let's say I save this. So now you see that I made a comment here. I made my second audio file and my first audio file here. So let's just play this. Hello. In this voice thread presentation, I will go over what I learned as a teaching scholar. My name is Ki Chan. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Division of Health Policy and Administration at the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health. I was very grateful for the opportunity to be a teaching scholar this year, where I was able to learn a lot of new tools and help me become a better teacher and scholar. In this presentation, I will go over three key concepts that I learned as a teaching scholar. First is using VoiceThread as a teaching tool, VoiceThread as a learning tool, and how to address challenges when using VoiceThread as an online tool. And as you can see, my comment that I made at the third part of the, of the slides shows at the very end. So let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, I will go over how VoiceThread can be used as a teaching tool. In this slide, I will provide a audio and video comment. So how to use VoiceThread as a teaching tool? It adds specificity to my teaching by allowing me to give direct feedback using audio or video on a student-specific excitement, presentation, and discussion post. I can use the VoiceThread tool to highlight, actually circle onto the screen, or point to where I am asking the students to uh, make changes, or where I want them to highlight, or even give a compliment on a specific area of their presentation or assignment. Second is that it adds back to humanistic aspect of teaching because it allows me to connect with my students, especially students with different learning styles. Maybe some students learn better with audio, or maybe some students learn better by seeing um, visual images. And so when they see you, um, they learn better in this asynchronous platform. Third is the flexibility. The VoiceThread tool is also accessible on your mobile phone. So you can provide feedback and evaluate the feedback from your students or give feedback on the desktop and on your phone. So how to use VoiceThread as a teaching tool? It adds specificity to my teaching by allowing me to give direct feedback using audio or video on a student-specific assignment presentation, and discussion posts. Mm, I like that video, so I'm going to save it. Now let's go over how VoiceThread can be used as a learning tool. I'm going to make my recording now. So VoiceThread as a learning tool. It allows students to be more engaged. Students can see and hear each other their classmates as if they're in a classroom, even though they're learning online, they're learning at different time zones, different places, anywhere in the world. It makes it much more interactive, the learning environment. Students can provide feedback to each, to each other as if it's real time because they can play back the voice thread presentation because it weaves it all together. And it's multimedia purpose. Um, VoiceThread can be used for presentation, a discussion on an article, a video, an image. So it has a multimedia approach to learning. And many of our students are on their phone all the time, are constantly taking photos, or like to read blogs and share blogs instantly. So VoiceThread, because it's able to be accessible on the mobile phone, it allows that capability. 
So voice threat as a learning tool. It allows students to be more engaged. Students can see and hear each other, their classmates, as if they're in a class. Okay, I'm gonna just save that because I think that's fine. In this part, we'll go over student examples of using voice threads in their team presentations. Members of the same team provided their audio files and voice thread weaved the files together. Members from different teams were able to provide feedback as if it was a presentation in a real seminar where students were able to ask questions, provide feedback, and other resources um, to this particular team. We will look at team number eight's project presentation. Team member MS provides the first audio narrative comment. The scientific method in the real world, Experience Core in a John Hopkins University, presented by Group 8. After the introduction slide, another member from Team 8, also of the initial MS, makes the second narrative comment on the second slide. Academic and community group partnerships present challenges to public health research, but these challenges are not impossible to overcome. The Johns Hopkins Center on Aging and Health favors organized research, such as a randomized controlled trial, in order to generate research that proves the effectiveness of the Experience Corps program. After the team presentations using the voice threads are completed, members from different teams are able to provide feedback, ask questions by inserting a comment, either using an audio, a video, or a text file. Here's an example of a member from a different team, SM, giving a feedback to Teams 8's project. Members of the, the Greater Homewood Community Corporation want to know what are some of the biases and how can we eliminate some of those biases. And I guess in any randomized clinical trial, there are always some biases. So we selected a couple of them. The first one is selection biases. So it sounds like here that what, there seems to be an issue of community trusting the researchers because in a randomized control trial actually eliminates select treatment selection bias. And that's kind of the whole purpose of a randomized control trial is that selecting a treatment isn't up to the investigator or um, up to some um, the schools or the parents, but it's done on a, by, through a random mechanism. Here's another example of team member DT providing an audio file. So as stated, we will implement this project in multiple branches rolled out in two phases. The first branch involves the schools where volunteers have already, already been working. Clearly they cannot be randomized into a trial, but they can... Here's another example of a member from a different team providing feedback to BT. I think this is a great and creative solution. Uh, during phase one, when researchers do their analysis, it'll be really important to consider the bias from the not random samples, such as the school selected by the mayor. These examples show you how team members at different time zones, different places, are able to make an oral presentation in a very seamless way. Students in the class, members from different teams, are able to provide feedback to this team's presentation. In addition to seeing the text of the PowerPoint slides, hearing the voices of your students giving the presentation enriches the whole entire learning experience for the class and for the instructor as well. Now that I show you the benefits of using VoiceThread in your courses, I'm gonna share with you also some of the challenges that I encounter while using a new technology so that I hope that you can learn from what I've learned. So how do you evaluate team learning using VoiceThread? I mean, evaluating team in general is very difficult sometimes, right? I mean, students um, are complaining that either they, con they contributed more work than the other person or how do you rate the quality of the work? And especially when it's online where you don't see the students and students are working on the assignments asynchronously at different time zones, different places. So that makes it even more difficult, right? So I participated in many of the workshops provided by the Teaching Scholar program this year. And one of the topics was team-based learning. In this workshop, I learned this new concept of team-based learning where there's tools to systematically evaluate individual learning and an individual readiness for team learning and the synergy of peer-to-peer -peer learning and evaluation. So there's a wealth of information and tools and rubrics to evaluate team-based learning. And I can actually apply these learning tools in an online classroom. So I'm going to be adding this to my um, team learning and team teaching using VoiceThread next semester. Second is to how to relieve the student stress on learning new technology. 
Um, next time, I'm going to make a non-credit assignment using VoiceThread so that students can play around with the tool without stressing out about points and grades. And once they master the technology, we can add the technology, which is here, the VoiceThread, to the assignment. So for example, a non-credit assignment could be, I want all the students to upload a PowerPoint slide that describes their favorite color or their favorite hobby or what they like to do on weekends. And it could be an image or text. And this way it allows students to practice uploading a file, either an image, a photo, or a website, and that they can upload this non-credit assignment and students can um, make comments and provide feedback to each other. There were Therefore, they learn how to upload, make their own comments, and also contribute comments to each other's um, VoiceThread file. Third is, how do I assess and evaluate my own teaching and learning of implementing new learning tools, especially online tools? I teach in the DRPH program where we teach leaders and students how to become adaptive leaders in addressing public health issues, which is always emerging and changing. And one of the tools that we use is systematic reflection. So I decide to use the tool that we teach our students, a weekly systematic reflection. I evaluated what worked, what didn't on a weekly basis. And in my journal, I wrote, okay, what worked and what, any complaints and any compliments from the students. And I evaluated, you know, how I addressed those concerns. And over the course of the 15 weeks, I learned a lot about team-based learning, um, how to evaluate students using this new tool, and some of the concerns they had, and, and how I could address these concerns the next time when I'm using this tool and also implementing new tools. And also, as a teacher and a scholar, I really also want to evaluate, am I being the best teacher as I can while I'm learning these new tools and teaching the course material? So, systematic reflection is a very valuable tool that we teach in our dear PH program, which is a Doctor of Public Health program in leadership. So how do you evaluate team learning using VoiceThread? I mean, evaluating team in general is very difficult sometimes, right? I mean, students um, are complaining that either they, con they contributed more work than the other person, or how do you make the quality of the work? And especially when it's online. Okay, I think I like that, so I'm just going to save that so we can um, end this presentation and at the saving and one last very helpful tip in addition to inserting comments such as audios and text and video is that you can draw onto the screen so in this example I'm going to pick the color purple and draw onto the screen so this allows you to emphasize which area of the presentation that your student is presenting that you want them to make changes or you want to highlight that was a good job as you are giving your audio or video comments. And what I want to show you here is that you can also use this editing tool. So I'm going to highlight here. This is where I am. All right, we're near the end of my presentation. So let's do one quite final review of the voice thread that was made by embedding the audio, video, and text file. Let's do a quick run through. So as you can see, if I were to play this again, it would play this slide automatically. And if I, and if I want to flip to the next slide, I would hit onto this arrow button down here. So how do you use VoiceThread as a teaching tool? So VoiceThread as a learning tool, it allows students to be feel free to now that was a quick run through. Now we can save and you can see that the voice thread presentation is now embedded in my Blackboard site. Thank you for watching my video. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Here's my contact information. Feel free to give me any feedback and questions about my presentation. And if you want to use voice thread in your courses, feel free to contact me. Here's my contact information. I'm at the School of Public Health in the Department of Health Policy and Administration. My email is kchan88 at uic.edu. You can also visit me at my website, which is www.keychanphd.com. And you can find additional teaching resources at the tlc.uic.edu website. Thank you for your attention and to TLC for this opportunity. Thanks.